And good morning. It's time now on this Friday, November 20th, 2015, for the Elder Law Report. We've got Greg McIntyre in the studio. And Hayden is on the telephone with us this morning. And Greg has his guests as well. Take it away, Greg. Hey, 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 uh, Milton, you've heard of Lady Bird Deeds, right? Yes, Lady Bird Deeds. Yes. Oh, well, I'm going to change the name to Lady Bug Deeds because we got a bunch of ladybugs in here this morning for some reason. <laughs> yep, there so if you're So if you're watching on the YouTube channel, go back and watch that one. Um, you'll see us. We're not killing them. We're just moving them around, okay? So we got an yeah, attack they're, in here. They're our morning. pets. <laughs> they're your pets? Okay, good, good, good. So I'm going to trust maybe Hayden's on the phone. Uh, I don't know how this technology works and he's going to plug in. But as soon as I hear her talking and... And chime in, I'll, I'll know it's, it's happened. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Hayden. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Well, thank you for uh, phoning in from the Elder Law Report this morning. Are you at, are you, are you at your your home on the lake today? Yes. Okay. A okay. little condo. Your condo on the lake. Is it pretty on the lake today? Yes, it is. Well, Sun, good. Sunny and pretty. I, th- I Thank you for calling in. I appreciate you doing that. Well, I wouldn't miss it. Well, good, good, good. So, so it's time for the Elder Law Report. You know, we had a really super busy week last week, um, and and have had an equally busy week this week. Although, you know, no, uh, no, really, uh, no, no getting out in the community much this week. Just really buckling down, doing hard work in the office. Last week, we were at the Neal Senior Center. We were at the Senior Center in Rutherford County, um, and we were at the YMCA and did a seminar on veterans aid and attendance. All those events were veterans related. And we were very, very honored to take take part in that. I, as a veteran, really take uh, take taking care of our veterans and Veterans Day and honoring those veterans seriously. So that's why last week our show on Friday was about veterans benefits. And we're going to try to have uh, Evan Thompson on, the district deputy commander for the American Legion, uh, back on for a second round just to finish up and talk a little bit more about American Legion and veterans benefits in general. <clears throat> but today. I am very proud to have two very, very uh, smart ladies with me today who are Angela Padgett, who is the Senior Center Director, the Neal Senior Center Director in Shelby, North Carolina, as well as Heather Ledbetter, who is the Nutrition Coordinator for the Neal Senior Center in Shelby. And uh, those ladies are with me today. Heather's going to talk about something that I just think is amazing, which is their Meals on Wheels program. I call it the Meals on Wheels ministry. Um, and just that that's going to touch your heart today. It, I know it touches mine. Um, I, I am lucky enough to be able to serve on the board of the Neal Senior Center uh, uh, and, and really enjoy doing that. I know Calvin Hastings is rolling back on and was inducted as a new board member again, the owner of this radio station, Milton. Um, and, and so, so there's a lot of people in the community who are serving on that board and really believe strongly in that senior center. Uh, believe it or not, uh, Cleveland County has great senior programs and the senior center there and it is, is a model for people. They come in and look at that from all around just to see how it was set up and run uh, and just how efficient it is. Um, so, okay, um, Thanksgiving's coming up next week. Um, Man, I'm so thankful for so many things, especially this radio show and all the gifts I have in my life. So we're going to have all my family on, including the kids, and just talk to you a little bit next week uh, about the importance of family and Thanksgiving and maybe working to to provide for and then protect your hard-earned money and property, okay? Um, So, Hayden, how are you doing out there? Is there anything, information that we need to put out for upcoming events and things going on? Well, you know me, I'm full of little tidbits of information. Sure. Uh, a new fuel powered, excuse me, hydrogen powered vehicle is being developed by GM for the Army. Right. And, it, you know, that's the kind of, um, I think, innovation we need. It needs to come from uh, the Army or private funding and stuff like that. So I'm pleased about that. Wow. So, uh, hydrogen. That sounds safe. <laughs> hydrogen. Yeah, and it's it serves dual purposes. For once, and for one, it makes the vehicles very quiet, yeah. and for another, the byproduct is water. So when you're in an arid environment, then you can produce your own water and propel the vehicle at the same time. So I thought that was interesting. And uh, in and look, you know, if you have a wreck, then uh, it destroys the entire block. Really? Yeah, if it blows up because it's hydrogen. 
Well, I haven't read that far in the article. That's kind of a downside for me. But. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. No, I'm sure it's perfectly <laughs> safe. I trust everything that's developed by the army. So, oh yeah, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm sure we do need innovation and in production. We really, uh, we do, we need to move things forward. No doubt. Yeah. Any, anything else to put out this week? Well, not really. Unless you want to know about a six-inch long Glock. A six-inch long smallest, what? smallest. Uh, it's a Glock pistol. I just read it's the smallest little pistol produced, and I know we have a lot of people out there who are interested in buying and selling guns. But this is six inches long, four inches high, and not quite an inch wide, including a six-round clip. That sounds Very like something that could fit in your handbag. Are you going to shoot me, Hayden? No. Okay. Do you no, but get... I do have my concealed carry. You do? I, I only use it when I take my grandchildren places. But, okay. Yeah. Not when you're on the radio show, right? No, no need there. Milton's safe. Okay. All right. I trust Milton. Hey, but, you, you know, know, you, the, you know, go the ahead, senior sorry. center... No, I was just going to uh, kind of lead into the senior center by saying how much my friends and I enjoy it. And the exercise programs and the yoga and the different things they have there, they're just things a lot of people don't even know are there. Uh, so I'm excited to hear uh, Angela and uh, Heather talk about the programs today. Well, let, let's get into that and pull back the curtain on the senior center and talk about all the many programs and services they offer the community. Um, you know, Hayden, something I didn't know that I just learned this morning is Angela Pageant, the senior center director, is uh, used to work at WOHS, the radio station. Really? Yes. It was that. Well, good morning to Angela and Heather. Good morning. Good morning. Was that your first job? That was my first job out of college. It was. And who hired Milton you? Took a, Milton Baker did. He took a chance on me. He sure did. And I, and because I went to school for broadcasting and for television. Right. He uh, he was the first one that took a chance. And then, of course, while I was working here, the racing bug had always been, you know, my family had been involved in racing for years. And then I just I went to work for Henry Motorsports, and and left here and went there and was there 15 <laughs> years and then came back to the county. That is mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, but it, it was it was Milton and Calvin. It's a small a world. On me. Mm -hmm. Very it, small it, it world. It really is. Yeah, it's. Hot. I always tell Milton it's like coming home every time right. I come here. It, it tickles me to be able to come back and see everybody. Is Milton really as mean as you said? Oh, he's not mean at all. <laughs> I've no, mellowed. he's not I've, mean. I've mel mellowed in my. He's, yeah, mellowed. he's mellowed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, That's good. Right. <laughs> well, it's good. This is like a homecoming for you today. It is. Yeah. It so, sure is. but now you know you're you're big time. You're the senior center director. That's right. You're the director. Yeah, Paulette's the executive director, and then I'm right under her, senior center director. You're the senior That's center right. director. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. I moved up in the world. So I what, was the housing director. Yes, you were. And then got promoted. And mm -hmm. now you're promoted. That's right. Well, you must be doing something right then. I hope I am. Well, good. <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's like I said. I, I I believe a lot in in help helping seniors. That's what I do um, on the legal side, um, and just you know, I'm very plugged into the senior center as well. We do events over there, uh, host them, sponsor them, and uh, I just think a ton of what you guys do over there. And you know, it's it's just an amazing place. T tell us a little more about it. Well, we, we have um, so much that we do for our seniors in Shelby, um, and, and not just but, um, our services, but we're, uh, we are a senior center, but we're more like an activity center. We're not a, we're not a nursing facility. We're, we're not um, a um, carillon or play, a you know, place like that. We're not or assisted life living. Or life enrichment. <clears throat> People that are active can come and fellowship with us. It's, it's all about fellowship and socialization. We do there are a lot of so, there's a lot of socializing that goes on. All there. right, and we do not want people to sit home behind you know and, and stare at four walls all day long. No, it, there's a lot of people in the county. Um, you don't realize this until you become an employee of the senior center, especially in the housing part of it. A lot of seniors do not have family here, or that a family doesn't have anything want to have anything to do with them. I do not understand that. I didn't realize how bad that was until again I became a housing director. But we do, folks like that need to have fellowship or need to have socialization or they go downhill. They wind up in nursing homes and, and have to go to places like Life Enrichment or they wind up in assisted living. We don't want that to happen. We want them to be as, as healthy as they can be, mind, body, spirit. So first, mm -hmm. families need to love 
and That's respect exactly and right. take care exactly of their right. seniors they that do. are in their families, number um, one. Exactly. Okay, but we're so busy mm-hmm. in our lives and whatever else that that uh, maybe sometimes that doesn't happen. And, and, and like I said, you and I've told Milton this numerous times how, how often that happens. You know, we have a, in our housing facility, we own three properties. A lot of people don't know that. We manage to, we, uh, Forest Glen is managed by another company. We own that property though. Um, Marion West and West Warren, we, we manage and, um, you know, we have three employees out there, site manager, service coordinator, and a, a, a maintenance technician. Our service coordinator makes sure she walks that property every morning. She knows exactly what time those blinds need to be open on a certain person's home. If she doesn't see blinds open at 10 o'clock and, um, you know, in J2 or whatever that apartment is, she's knocking on the door because she wants to know if they're all right. And, and, and we, and she, her job is to do assessments. And, and, and when she first started, Pam actually came from Hendrick, Hendrick Motorsports too. That's the, that's the service coordinator. Mm-hmm. She, she followed me from she drives from Davidson every day and she cares about those seniors and and there's a lot of f- people that live in our pro- our two properties that she's really the only one that that takes care of them I mean yeah. there is independent living but she makes sure they get their commodity she makes because the families just don't um, you know they just don't and we don't know why they just don't um, so there again there's a lot of folks in this situation and that's why we're our services and our senior center is important Right. Um, because we don't want them to be left out. <clears throat> we want them taken care of as long as we can help them. You have a great craft store there we at the do. Senior Center. We mm-hmm. do. Gift shop. That has cool cool gifts and crafts. A lot of those mm-hmm. things are made by the seniors, aren't they? They are. Um, anyone 50 or over can put, can, you know, 50 years old now is considered seniors. You That's know? crazy. <laughs> 50 so young. Yeah. 50 senior? <laughs> What? Yeah, 50 and up. Um, is now 50 or that better is, is what we say. 50 or better. Yeah. And uh, folks bring in handmade items into the gift shop. I tell everybody every day, especially around Christmas. Right. Um, a 70 or, or $35 birdhouse, handmade birdhouse is sitting in our gift shop. If you would try to find that on eBay or go in to Southern Christmas Show right. and see that you're going to spend 75 to $100 on these birdhouses. We have them for $35 or $45. Yeah. And and uh, Glenn Hicks is a gentleman from Kings Mountain that comes in and makes them for us. Uh-huh. Um, we have all kinds of stuff. That it, it, I tell people every you know we're open. The gift shop's open at, at same hours as ours. We're eight to five Monday through Thursday, eight to one on Friday. If you need a, a Christmas gift or a birthday gift or just a gift in general for anybody or yourself, just come and and, and come and buy. And we actually have a website too that I always do an item of the month. NeilSeniorCenter.org. Right. And and you can look online. I wish we had a way to sell online. I know there's ways to sell online, but as far as our our, our website itself, mm-hmm. I wish there was a way we could sell over our website. Right now, there's not. We don't have a shopping cart on there, but maybe yeah. one day, you know, there's always eBay, <clears throat> and that's something we could do is sell product online. And, and, and the, of course, the person making the items get a percentage of the profit, and then the senior center gets the rest. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and fun, fundraising is important. It really is why important. Is that, why is fundraising important to the senior center? Because we are not a county-owned property. Okay. And a lot of people think we are because it's Cleveland County Council on Aging. Right. But we do not. We get some monies from the county. Uh, most of ours is through the help with United Way, folks like that. But then it's also it's fundraising. It's um, it's raising private funds, mm-hmm. and we have an active board that, that tries to, mm-hmm. to to get events going. We do bingo, bingo, right. we, bingo. That's right, bingo. And Milton always helps me <laughs> reminds me about bingo every time I come over here. But we bingo is a monthly, or excuse me, a weekly fundraiser. Okay. Every Monday night, uh, doors open at five thirty. We have refreshments. We sell great hot dogs. And we have a game that uh, lasts until about 9 o'clock. You know, the um, pre-bingo starts at 5.30. Um, regular games start at 7. That's every Monday night unless there's a holiday. And we have a huge bingo game coming up December the 28th. That's our pre-New Year's bingo. Guaranteed $500 jackpot. We usually see about 100 people come in to play on our special bingos. But we need to get our regular... Excuse me, our regular bingos up higher. Our numbers have dropped a little bit, mm-hmm. so uh, we we're going to try to figure out what we can do to get those numbers up during the week. You know, for the rest of the games. But sure. but that pre New New Year's bingo again is December the twenty eighth, and we'd love people to come out. Packets are nineteen dollars, uh, twenty three dollars, or thirty two, and you can actually for the special bingos you can prepay for them. I have do see Mary Hamrick. I have some and, questions. Uh huh. So bingo. 
Do I have to be a senior to come play bingo? You, if you're 12 years old or up, you can play. 12 or up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you sure can. And this, yeah. I mean, this is a serious bingo game. It is. And I'm, I, I, you know, the callers that come and call for our bingo are brave people. Because they mess up one time and everybody in that room is going to, they're going to make them know they messed up. Really? <laughs> you know, they holler. <laughs> Don't they either? They, they, they do. They get mad. They get, they get <laughs> They're really serious players. Man, I remember <laughs> going with my grandparents to play bingo. And I'm trying to remember where we used to go. There were different places. We would go to different bingo games and mm-hmm. play bingo. Yeah, there's I want to say five. Maybe it. they used to have one over at Fiber in a building every once in a while. I remember playing there and playing other places too. Right. But I love to go play bingo. I always played when I was younger at the fairgrounds. Fairgrounds. You know, the fairgrounds. Yeah. Every year during the fair, we had, they had the bingo game. They had it this year, you know. Yeah. But that's where my parents and I went and played. <clears throat> but this is a regular, regular game. It is. It is. And uh you know, when it people, it, you know, sometimes when we say bingo, people kind of f- poke fun at it. But, you know, and the reason why I say that is we, I was just come from training and, and uh, uh, me and Lori Livingston went to training and um, we, uh, it's Senior San and Johnson training. It was, it's at Caroline Beach, which was a pretty good place. <laughs> but when we said something about we need volunteers for bingo, everybody kind of g- giggled. But then when we told them what, because people think about the little, you know, sitting there with the little rolly thing and just five or six people playing, they didn't realize the magnitude of our bingo game. Right. And when we told them and what we did, they wanted, people are still calling me saying, hey, tell us about that bingo game. We want our senior center to do that bingo game. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's pretty neat. It's pretty, and I invite everybody, and let you 12 and up to come out. Good. And play. Mm-hmm. Good. So come out and play some bingo. All the, all the proceeds go. That aren't won at the bingo, right? By the people. I mean, people win money there. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. like I said, you know that big bingo game. We all, it's five hundred dollar guaranteed jackpot. Wow. You know, so um, Heather, yeah. all of the staff works those those bingo <clears throat> games. We rotate out. Heather's a check writer. I I run the paperwork. Sure. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty neat game. Yeah, yeah. and and it's and I'll, and and it goes to help fund. The, and run the senior center. Well, what that money actually goes to is to help pay our building off. Pay the building. We have a four hundred thousand dollar debt that we need to pay off. Yes. And and that money at the end of the year, that check is written to that building fund, and that's that helps us pay. But we we really need some people to help us with that building fund, and and that's something uh, we just started a GoFundMe page, mm-hmm. um, which I'm if you don't mind, I'm going to read out uh, uh, www.gofundme.com backslash senior center. Heather started it, and we need donations to pay our building off. Okay, so if you want to help pay off the Senior Center building, go to www.gofund, that's G-O-F-U-N-D, mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. M-E, right. dot com. Dot com. And contribute. That's right. It could and be all five, you, it's just a credit $5. card. $5. It mm-hmm. could be Yes, exactly. $100,000. $400,000. $400,000. That's, that's right. right. Pay it off. Pay the building <laughs> off. And, so, and, yeah. and to be honest with you, if we could get that debt paid, she wouldn't have to worry about her meals on wheels. So tell me, let's, mean, let's leave it. That's a good transition. How does the debt being paid make the meals on wheels program suffer? Um, well, I mean, we, we have a, well, Heather, tell you, 85 we people ha- on a waiting list. We have a great meals on wheels program at the Senior Center. And Heather, as the nutrition coordinator, introducing Heather Ledbetter, <laughs> the nutrition in the right corner, the nutrition coordinator for the senior center and and uh you help you run the meals on wheels program yes sir and how many people tell us what it is tell us what it is number one well what we do is we serve 100 120 homebound seniors in cleveland county um we send them a hot meal monday through thursday and then we also send them a shelf stable meal for uh Friday and the weekend since we don't serve on Fridays. Uh, the Meals on Wheels program, it is for seniors who are 60 and over and they have to be considered homebound, which means that they barely drive, you know, if they go to the store that doesn't count, you know, but if um, most of them don't have a car, most of them don't drive, most of them don't have family that's there to um, fix them that hot meal during the day. And uh, like Angela said earlier, a lot of them don't have the family support that they need. It's amazing when we grow up, we move off and we forget about mom and dad sitting back at home and they're staying there and they're trying to be independent and stay healthy and 
you know, pay for medicines and food and power, and then they have to make the decision, you know, do I buy me food this week? Do I get that hot meal? And so the Meals and Wellness program keeps them from having to make that choice, number one. And number two, it ensures that they're getting a nutritious meal Monday through Thursday. Whereas if we didn't send that to them, they would be sitting there maybe eating a bowl of cereal. And a bowl of cereal for a cancer patient doesn't give them what they need. Um, so we really encourage people to um, come, you know, support this program and to help us with Meals on Wheels because there is 85 people on the waiting list right now. And when they call me, unfortunately, they're not calling to say, I'm going to need food next month. They're not calling to say, I think I might be hungry in a week. They call because they need that program the day they call. And so what we do is we will put them on the waiting list and we will uh, try to offer them some other things in the meantime. Like we do have a food pantry. Um, we can give them food once a month from that. Um, we do have Boost. Uh, that's a nutritional drink that we can give out once a month. And we try to help them with any other programs that we can in, t in the meantime. But, you know, unfortunately, sometimes and time is our biggest hindrance because if somebody calls and they're under hospice care and they're needing a meal sent to them every day and we don't have the funds to put them onto the program, how long can they wait? How long can they be on that program just sitting there wondering when that meal will come? Right. And so, um, and so, not. So, how many people? The, it's a federally funded program, number one. Yes. There are federal funds available, and those come in on a regular basis to pay for the program. Yes. But that only pays for a limited number of people to receive meals every month. Yes. Tell me again, or you might you might have already said it. How many people receive meals per month? 120. Right 120 every right day. now. Every day. Yeah, Monday through Thursday. Monday through Thursday. And then... Are these all indigent people? Yes. Um, and that's what another thing people don't understand and they say why can't they use the microwave and heat something up why can't they cook a dementia and diseases like that are very powerful and you would be surprised how many people sit there and say I don't know how to use the microwave and you can show them you can write it down and the next day or a couple hours later it's gone they have no idea and you think about those older gentlemen who their wives have already passed and they've never cooked a day in their life. And so they're 92 years old and you're trying to teach them how to use a microwave, how to use the stove. And if, they, if you can't remember, if your mind's gone, then what if you leave the stove on? Uh, many of the seniors actually don't have a working stove in their home for that reason because the chances of them leaving it on, that's gas poisoning, that's a chance to burn the house down, um, it's not safe. Right. So you're, so you're making it possible for them to actually stay at home? Yes. Without the Meals on Wheels program, could they stay at home? I don't believe so. Many of them depend on it, and actually most of them will say that they look, that's their main meal that they get each day. And without the program, all of those seniors, you think about the 120 that we serve, what would they do? You know, would they end up in nursing homes? You know, losing your independence is a big thing for seniors because you worked all your life to get to that home, to get make that home that you have. Yeah. And then somebody to say, you know, well, you can't cook you a meal anymore, so you can't stay there no more. Are all of the meals free yes. to these people? Yes. Um, it is a no-cost program, so we are able to send that meal out to them. And um, they can send in donations. Um, sometimes they send in a handful of change. A um, couple of dollars here and there, um, but mostly it is no cost to them. Okay, let, let me ask you this. Do you have a waiting list? Yes, um, we do. We have 85 seniors on our waiting list right now. That, that the federal monies don't fund? Correct. Okay, so how can you, how, how are, are, you, are there any plans in the works? How does it work? How can you fund um, somebody else make the, the waiting list smaller so that more seniors can receive meals they need at home. Um, we do have some people who've started this uh, where they can sponsor a senior and anybody can do that. Um, you can sponsor one senior off the waiting list for $1,800 a year. Um, and 
we've had people um, just one person may do sponsor senior we have church groups that will gather that and they'll sponsor and send in 150 a month um, you know it's optional or you can just send in a one-time donation to help support that um, and there again we also with our shelf stable food we have our lunchbox program and that's another thing that people may sponsor that as well because that's a, a, a weekly thing that we go to the store and buy and uh, send out to them I went this week and it was hundred and seventy dollars this week normally ranges from hundred to sixty to two hundred dollars and what people don't think about is we have 120 seniors that get it. We have to get 120 of every item that we purchase. So if I send out five to seven items, uh, then I have to have 120 of every one of them. So um, each week we go out and we'll buy that. So we have to be able to support that So because we want them to be able to have something on the weekend. you know. So we try to do stuff that's pop tops, things that you don't necessarily have to cook. Right. Um, now, I would personally prefer soup hot, but you don't technically yeah. have to he heat it up. Um, so we do do that as well. But the main thing with the waiting list and with programs like that is we do need community, community support. We need people to help us and to help get these seniors off that waiting list so right. that way they can you know benefit from the program and stay at home and stay independent and stay healthy understood do you take food donations yes we do um the main thing is it has to be in date a lot of people like love to clean out their closets and clean out their cabinets and that's great but we cannot send out anything that's out of date to our seniors Okay, and that's under the rules of the federal program. Yes, I bet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 And and so so uh, it cost eighteen hundred dollars per year mm -hmm. for a senior to participate in this program. Yes. So that's eighteen hundred times eighty five. That's the need, right? Yes. Okay. So so we depend on the community for donations and do other. We, and at the Senior Center, I know we do other fundraising activities yes. to try to do that, uh, try to help that, okay? The pay down the building fund as well as fund meals on wheels and other things that the Senior Center does. So it's important for the community to support that, and, it, and it's taking care of a, a great need. I, just what touched my heart about it was thinking about someone who is elderly, sitting in a home, maybe worked all their life for that home, and now because of very little funds coming in and maybe a situation with some uh, onset of dementia or Alzheimer's just cannot cook for themselves, cannot eat, and literally are starving in their own homes. And we, we, you know, it's easy to see people in need when they're on the street or they're out, you know, but it's hard to know that there's people that are really in need and have those same needs that are, that are, that are behind closed doors and that we don't see on a regular basis. Right. Right. And that's something that people don't think about. These seniors lay the foundation for where we're at today. They worked for us and they built the road that we come down. They paid and, taxes. They and, literally built the roads. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And, you know, they're the ones that are sitting there. And, you know, when you said it's a ministry and we like to say it's more than a meal, it is more than just a meal. Because for those that don't have family, the drivers are the ones that they are volunteers are the ones they see every day. They're, they're guaranteed smart the guaranteed person that's going to say how are you you know how are you doing and check on them so it really is more than a meal to them it is their independence and their livelihood right I was just figuring here at eighteen hundred dollars a year a company or a family could pay a hundred and fifty dollars a month or it's like maybe around forty dollars a week to do this right yes um, we, it, it, it would be nice to have a campaign to try to get Companies and individuals, you know, to, to do that. Sponsor a yeah. senior. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you want to sponsor a senior, where where would somebody call? Um, they can call the senior center. Uh, the main line is 704 482 3488. They can talk to me. My name is Heather Ledbetter, and I am the nutrition coordinator. And um, they can, with any other questions or for any, any more information about the program. Or okay. If, and if you want that number, uh, or need that number in your car, can't write it down, call the radio station here. at. Uh, Milton, could you put out the numbers for the radio station where they can call? Sure. You can call us at 704-482-1390, 435-2844, or 735-8071. That's all 704 area code. Well, we're running out of time. Greg, 
It goes Can by I? so quickly. Um, yes. What's up? What's up, Hayden? Well, I just lost it. I had something pulled up here on my iPad that said that friend, that your family has a negligible effect on longevity, your, your connection with family. But it was like a 22% greater longevity. And I don't have the statistics with friends. Right. You know, and, and people that you choose, and, and, and I think that was oh, the point that oh we're gosh. making. You I'm, don't choose your family, but you choose your friends and the connections that they make there at the senior center and at other places where they get out and among other people are really contributing to their longevity. So quality of life is longe- longevity is great, um, and, uh, and thank you for that, Hayden. Thank you, Hayden, for being on. Thank you, Angela, for being on the thank show you, today. Thank you, appreciate it. And thank you, Heather, very much, uh, Heather Ledbetter, for talking about the Meals on Wheels program. Heather was so nervous, and she did such a great job. You did she such did. a great job today. I knew she would. Well, it's time to wrap it up. Uh, I'm Greg McIntyre, the Elder Law Guy. And, uh, you know, if you need me to help protect money and property, give me a call. That's what we do, 704-259-7040. And thank you, Milton. Sure. Play us out, man. Let's go. You're welcome. See you next Friday. And again, do join us next Friday for the Elder Law Report here on Big O Country and KTCBroadcasting.com where you can tune in and watch on our studio cameras.